Welcome back to Stay Tuned, I'm Tony Angelo and today we're working on one of the coolest projects we've got. This is our ultimate sleeper Lincoln Mark 8. Total grandpa car, right? Not exactly. It's in there somewhere, hold on. So this thing has a fully built 4.6 liter, 32 valve, turbocharged beast motor in here. But from here, boring grandpa car. The story of this car is this. I bought it running and driving for 1800 bucks. Killer value, it already has the 4.6 naturally aspirated 300 horsepower V8 in it, and it was pretty peppy. We grabbed a cheap Chinese turbo, made our own little turbo kit, and for about 4,200 bucks, had this thing making 394 wheel horsepower, which was a huge win, until we took it to the track to see what it could do. Within, I don't know, 400 feet of the first ever drag strip run, it blew all the guts out of the bottom side of this engine and all over the Maple Grove track, much, much to their disappointment. They were not thrilled with us that day. And we decided to start back at square one. Now at this point, I found on Marketplace a fully built zero miles nitrous motor, which has piston rings that should work for a turbo. I'm talking stroker crank, forged rods, forged pistons, super nasty, bullet cams, everything. Pristine, you could eat up this thing. We got super excited, slapped it in there, and fired it up on the dyno, and it made everything but oil pressure. Cool sounds, some horsepower, no oil pressure. Really our fault, we didn't know how to prime the oil system on a brand new fresh mod motor Ford, uh, and then we were sort of back to the drawing board. I was kind of bummed when that, you know, beautiful, pristine, built stroker motor blew up, and we just parked this thing outside of the other shop for months and months, and it was, its one job was to uh, become a mouse hotel where tons and tons of mice got to frolic and procreate freely and it smells disgusting in there. Right around that time I got excited about this project. Again, I found a $1,500 short block on Marketplace. Fully forged, much more pedestrian parts. It was just a Ford factory crank from a Terminator. Uh, it had some H-beam rods and pistons in it and I got it all for $1,500. I slapped everything I could salvage off that stroker motor you know, the heads, the camshaft, the intake manifold, put on a new Turbonetix turbocharger, got it all running. It made oil pressure this time, which was fantastic. And we're strapped it to the dyno, turned the boost up, and this thing made 515 wheel horsepower, which is radical and super awesome coming out of a very boring Lincoln Mark 8. Now this time, we're gonna do some upgrades to the back end of this thing and see just how quick it can really get down the track or the street, we'll see. So a couple issues with this car. I drove it to the other shop. I was excited about that 600 plus crank horsepower number. And every time this thing would come into boost, it would make like, oh, just a hard left turn. Cause you know, it's a luxury car. It's got these giant soft pillowy subframe bushings in it. And I don't know, 130,000 miles on every other bushing in this car. And the back end felt like it was trying to make a right while I was trying to make a left. It was a disaster. So we made some plans to upgrade just about everything. You know, on the cheap. Stay tuned style. We're gonna trade spending money for just lots and lots of elbow grease. I mean, she's singing today. Yeah. It's like a Scottish funeral. It's beautiful. <laughs> the very first time I delivered this thing back to their shop after getting it tuned up with all that horsepower, I let it eat in second gear and it started to make just a hard left under power. And I realized the back end of this thing cannot handle 600 plus horsepower that it's making now. And we've got to do a bunch of upgrades because it'll get set up for luxury. It's very squishy back there. And I could feel the whole subframe moving and jacking around. Uh, number one though, first priority was getting the rear end right. It was running in third gear with the old gear ratio. It was like 270, almost 200 mile an hour in third gear in the dyno. And it was an open diff, meaning it only powered one wheel. So we yanked this out weeks ago. In fact, Zimmy yanked this out. Uh, and we've got installed now is a Summit limited slip differential and a set of Dorman rear gears that are 355s. Uh, we had them installed. Charlie's Gears and Potsdam PA did an awesome job. It's got like the most perfect uh, gear intermesh pattern ever. Uh, so I feel good about that, that we didn't do it ourselves. It's ready to rock. That's all dialed, but now we've got to rip out the entire subframe and we're gonna replace every giant squishy rubber bushing with either Delrin or polyurethane. It's gonna be a, a lot stiffer and a lot more serious. Stiff and serious isn't really our thing here, but we're gonna do it. Grandpa deserves it. It's for grandpa. Grandpa's stiff and serious. It's for grandpa. 
Tyler is here. He's going to start yanking this stuff out. It's actually Barb's birthday. He's home having a little birthday That's dinner. Sure. But because he is so committed to stay tuned, he's coming right back. Before that happens, I'm going to hit the store, get my man a proper bottle of some dad juice so we can deliver it to him when he gets back for his birthday. All right, you do that. I'm going to hit the road. I'll be right back. Back in two. All right, it's lunchtime. As you know, we are all about the pizza around here. We're trying a new spot. This is some kind of like tomato sauce on top with pepperoni that Barb ordered up. We've got a couple people. Listen, we say we're like a pizza team with a racing problem. And if you want, someone asked once, if you want to buy us a pie, you can. There's a little donate, buy us a pizza button this week. We've got Scott Dunnicliffe. He said buy a pie with red gravy. My family actually calls it gravy. I know it's sauce, but this is what we got for you here. We appreciate you very much. Uh, Mike Calkins and Aaron Grattafiore who says that he's a longtime fan and we always motivate him to work on his 67 Camaro. So we hope you get that Camaro done. We appreciate everybody sending a couple bucks for pies. No pressure. You don't have to. Don't get worked up about it. But if you want to, we appreciate it. And now we're going to dig in. All right, there's one spring. She blows. There you go. All right, uh, Tyler is ready to pull the subframe out. I've got my buddy Chris from No Nonsense Know How. Check his channel out. He's a local guy. We may do some collaboration stuff soon. Yeah. I'm very excited about it. Uh, he's going to help us yank this subframe out. Barb has got his birthday whiskey back there. He's back here from his birthday dinner. And hey. uh, we'll see how many guys it takes to pull one of these things out. <laughs> the I answer is four. Four. Well, yeah, I guess you could help too, camera guy. <laughs> He's helping by holding the camera. Too heavy. I'm gonna lift this sucker down. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll be all right. It probably weighs 40 pounds. Show, right? Yeah. All right, coming down, y'all. Right, yeah, Tyler just Tyler right, just yeah. walking underneath it. Yeah, I'm good. Not, Don't not worry. a care in the yeah, world. Watch your head, Chris. A, Don't worry about me. Five, eight, yeah, you're yeah. Sure you, <laughs> you grab the top of it if that's possible. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say, you guys were uh, uh, what are they, we try 13? to keep it under six foot here, but that's fine. No big deal. Yeah, I have this theory that dudes that work on cars are either 5'8 or 11 feet tall. That's like the only, those, are the guys two, those are the two options. You ready? That's it. Well, when I worked at the shop, I was always jealous of the shorter dudes because yeah. I ended up getting a sore back at the end of the day and leaning over. Alright, beauty. Well, we're going with it. Uh, let's put on the floor here. Let me put up on this thing in a minute. Yep, that's from Pennsylvania right yeah. there. Yeah. Or North the Jersey, Lord. was it? Yeah. Where'd you get that thing, Barb? It was like down on the shore. Yeah, that looks right. Well, <laughs> that checks out. That checks out. There's some, there's some salt there in there. Down by the shore is right. The body's pretty good. Yeah, it is pretty good, right? Bay. Yeah. So that this car was 1150 bucks running and driving, not 1800 I misspoke earlier. That's my favorite part of the whole car. Which part? The drive shaft with the loop, the safety loop. Yeah. On top of the gas tank. They built oh, the whole right? car and they were, like, they were like, they were like, the safety loop. <laughs> yeah. They were like, oh, why doesn't this car go? And they're like, you forgot to put it in a gas tank. And they're like, oh, we'll just put it. This is yeah. Stick it here. Sufficient. They're like, the floor pan guys didn't talk to the yeah. gas tank guys. Now we got to stick it down yeah. here. Okay. So I've got this big pile of parts out here. This is going to stiffen up the entire rear end of the Lincoln and make it work properly and keep it from having a ton of wheel hop and sort of driving sideways when I don't want it to. So this is what we're looking at. These are giant subframe Delrin bushings from Supercoupe. These are hub or spindle or upright bushings from Supercoupe as well. These are upper arm bushings. These are like the toe correction arms. This is a, uh, this works with the Ford Racing uh, diff cover, but this is a rear diff uh, mount kit to strengthen it up because it only has the one mount. This is from our buddy Steven at PowerShift Factory. And then this is a Prothane kit 
that the guys at LMR sent to us and they said that even though it is specced out for an 04 Cobra, it will work on the lower arms for the Lincoln. Now we're going to just have a big party of hammering all those old bushings out and getting ready to press all this stuff in. So basically when you're doing a polyurethane or a Delrin setup, you're just trying to fight deflection. As stuff gets under load, it starts to get wonky, you lose wheel control, you'll start to get wheel hop or your alignment will change a bunch and the car just won't do what you tell it to do. So this is going to stiffen everything up and make it work better. Hey guys, we have a ton of Stay Tuned merch back in stock. All of this stuff is printed in PA by my old buddy Ralph. And uh, we've got all the classics here. We've got the, we're gonna lose the shop shirt, Stay Tuned hats, Angelo's Garage Gym, the Cyclone shirt, and of course the original Stay Tuned Garage shirt. So click the link, order up some fresh threads, and we appreciate every order. All right, let's make horsepower. Are we going to preface what we're doing here? Or? Yeah, we're going to get these old bushings out. There's like, burn them out, drill them out, cut them out. Here Just we go. get them out. Pull them out with the tow truck. Yeah. Whatever. Just so, yeah. Oh, Lord. Heck, get that one in too long. Yeah, I told you. Whack <laughs> that thing on the hand. Watch out, watch out. Drop an elbow on that thing. Oh. Uh, there it is. Just do that. Well, let's raise this side up and see if we can do so, it. Yo, there's yeah. no sleeve, I told you. I'm sure some yeah. people were uh, already commenting. Just hit it with a hammer. Just hit it with a hammer. <laughs> Hold on, fellas. There he is. This one's for nobody. I can't believe how easy they came out. It reminds me of like working at the shop on you know, the Hondas and having to fight them and cut them out. Like, oh yeah, the Nissan and stuff, dude, we would have to cut them, like drill them out hammer them out, cut the sleeves, hammer the sleeves in, yeah. and yeah. then finally nah. get it out. See, my Four, problem is words. this would never go in the garbage. Like, I would keep all these for future stuff that I'll never use it for. But, these, like, that's nice. You can nice take that home with you, buddy. Yeah. You want them? Mm -hmm. That's yours. Oh, actually, that's yeah. Yours. Don't, yeah. <laughs> don't tempt me. All right, I brushed it off real quick. Barb's going to give it a nice coat of paint, and we'll uh, start working on these hubs. Sorry, spindles, knuckles, whatever. Give her, a, give her a spray there, champ. Okay. What do you got there? What kind of paint are you holding there? We got Summit uh, Chassis Enamel Semi Gloss. Yeah, it's not rolled. Yeah. It's basically, basically new. See that? It's new. Catch this lip. Well, maybe not. Go ahead. Nope. One more of those. Uh... Wow. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the out out. You got that. Yeah. Cool. Chris is rocking, getting the other upright uh, D bushing, and we are gonna start trying to install these Delrin bushings on the one we've already removed. So this should be just a vice scenario. Push the, push the outside bushings in, and then we'll be able to just slide the center sleeve into it, I believe. Hold on, I'm not straight there. That looks nice. I'm sorry. Just ripped the table off. That's fine. Dang. Muscles over there. Tyler's like an extra buff in this video. <laughs>
Go Sweet. Done. There they are. Awesome. Let's eat some burritos. All right, so it's a whole new morning here at the Stay Tuned shop. We've got those spindles all dialed in with the Delrin bushings from last night. We're gonna now install um, polyurethane bushings in the lower control arms uh, with a Cobra set that actually works for the uh, Lincoln Mark 8. And I'm gonna put just a replacement upper bushing, uh, rubber style bushing in the upper control arms. And this thing will be just about ready to slap back together. I've got my oldest here. She's home from school on an in-service day. She's gonna help out a little bit. And this should be fun. <laughs> you see what it did? No. Nah. The, the blade slid in and it punched it out like an eighth of an inch already. Oh, wow. See it? Hey. This has a little extra lip thing here. Okay, let's... Pretty good. Good? Yep. Okay. There's one. All right. So rather than just reinstall these upper control arms with new bushings, they're kind of like limp noodles. So we're going to put a couple of braces in here and weld them in just to kind of box it all in. And it'll go from a limp noodle to a little bit more al dente. And that's hey. how I like it. So we did a quick scrub and paint on this thing. It looks pretty good. We're gonna to toss the subframe back in with these new Delrin Super Coupe subframe bushings. These are hard as rock. Um, so it's gonna to totally transform the way this thing puts down power and it's gonna be awesome. There is no give here, which is great. All right, you can do this on a cart uh, or on a jack if you're on the ground. There's three of us here, so we're just gonna lift it up. Come on, Barb. Your front one is not green, right? We put a little bit of weasel, anti-weasel 
Okay. Ooh. Dice these. I need the whiz. You got a socket? That's fine. I'll just run them up slow yep. and straight. Here. I'm just going to sneak these up. Man, that's it. I wish I felt it beforehand. It was not something that was <laughs> worth it. Yeah. Imagine you had a bunch of marshmallows in a pillowcase. <laughs> yeah. Just and then cool you to tried to surf, you put it on top of a surfboard and tried to surf on it. That's what it felt like. This is a very common drifting thing. For to put, install these suffering yeah. bushes right there. That I can imagine. Yeah. Cool. All right, we're gonna put the factory washers back on because we think we need to retain the gel room. Yeah, there, there's, yeah, there we go. Thank you. But don't worry, I've been checking. All right, I just check them all. So now we've got the subframe in the Lincoln. We're gonna finish up our 8.8 Ford differential and shove that sucker in there again. We've got the Summit uh, limited slip differential and a set of 355 Dorman gears that are really gonna wake this thing up around town. And we're putting in a Ford Racing cover that's not just a cover because it's got these, it's called a girdle. It's this big beefy hunk of aluminum and it has these braces that go right on the caps that stiffen the entire thing up. Again, we're sort of fighting deflection here. If they're able to move around, it's gonna make this thing less strong and more apt to sort of explode. So I'm going to put this on with a fresh gasket and this should be nice and sweet. I got a lube locker here. I'm a big fan of these gaskets. What you do, these are these two studs. Don't do that part. That just hold themselves against those bearing caps to stiffen everything up. So make sure they're on. Make sure that they are backed out. I took an Allen and I backed them out because you want to be able to install it nice and tight. And then you're going to feed these in until they contact those caps with about five to 10 foot pounds of torque and then lock down the nuts so that they can't travel anymore. And then you've got a much stronger whole unit. And I'll run these in. And we'll use some movie magic to make it look cool or something. Ready, go. All right, it's gold tightened up, ready to rock. What I'm gonna do now is set these stop screws. These again, just brace the entire unit to those bearing caps. You just give it a little five to 10 foot pounds. They say, are we there yet? We'll find it. There it is. All right, just enough to give it that support and then lock them down, lock these big lock nuts down and it's ready to install this thing. Okay. So we're trying to just get rid of any soft rubber issues. I'm going to be able to hammer on this thing and have nothing move but the tires. So this has two different options. It has the Delrin mount, which we're rocking or rubber. If you wanted to go a little bit cushier, we're avoiding that. And this is again from power shift. It's a cool little piece. So I'm going to get ready to toss it up in there. Tyler is going to throw some bolts in it and we will be moving along. I hope so. This is it. You got it? Yep. Okay. okay. So let's get the front on and then we'll figure out the back. car is gonna be a straight up unit, dude. So, this is how this sucker bolts in. Normally the bolts come from the top 
and hang, but we dropped ours, so we're going to just put new ones in from the bottom, make sure the clearance is good, and go on about our day. What size you thinking? These are 19s. 19s. And I think we have just enough had. thread and shank. It's, these are perfect. Those bolts are perfect. Try not to be in the camera. Look at you saying open the camera. This I'm, I'm learning. This guy's a natural. So these brackets bolt onto your rear cover with the appropriate hardware. And I'll snug that all up till I put the front end and then we'll tighten it down. So we'll tighten the fronts because we know they're in factory spots. These are slogged a little bit. And then we'll square it up here, tighten these up, and be done. Right. This now, left or right is pretty, I would tighten this. Okay. And, and then, then this, yeah. and then this. So we've got that rear subframe in, we've got the Ford 8.8 .8 rear end, the third member is installed with the 355 gears, and now the Summit track lock limited slip, and that power shift brace, so it's all in there nice and strong. We're now going to install all of our control arms, these are the uppers that we even kind of reinforced and painted, they look great, but every single thing here, the uprights, the lower control arms, and the upper control arms have all had all that squishy, gross rubber tossed in the trash and pushed out of the way. In place, we've installed now either Delrin or polyurethane. So this whole rear end of this car is gonna be fully dialed. We just have to now install it all and then get it aligned. So let's get rocking. Yeah, let her hang for sure. I think this goes like this. Yeah. And it has that weird nut on the end, right? Yeah. I have it. All right, let's toss an axle in. Grab me yeah. one. Heck yeah. Cool. Okay. Spring. Oh, weasel, weasel. You're gonna need those bolts and nuts, but yeah. That's it, you're just there. That's it, perfect. Yep. That's fine. Go grab some hardware. Yep. I'll hold it. You all right? Uh, I've been better. I like it. We're cool. There it is. So I think it'll be like this. Can you bring that thing up here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that'll work. Get that in the hole. Beauty. Yeah. Hit it. Nice. 
right, this corner is all buttoned up. It wasn't too bad of a fight. We're going to throw the other side together and then do a couple last minute things. This car's going to be ready to rock in a minute. Alignment at some point, but it's cool. All right, the rear end of the Lincoln is just about back together. We've got our new 355 gears, the LSD, all those Delrin bushings, all the arms are back in. I'm gonna throw on the brakes, the sway bar, bolt the shocks up, get this thing on the ground, and we're gonna be ready to see just how quick this thing really is. Maybe have a quick alignment done. If I can't get one, we'll do it with, you know, our iPhones. Be fine. All right, it's my favorite time and stay tuned when we've got the cars out on the road to do some driving with them. The Lincoln is back together, brakes are on it. We did a quick eyeball alignment and I just drove it four or five miles from the shop. So what you wanna do with a new ring gear, warm it up and then you're gonna let it cool down. That's what it's doing now. Since it's also got a new LSD in there, I did some figure eights just to like put some stress on it, move the plates around and make sure that they're all fully lubricated. Same kind of thing. Uh, and in a couple of minutes, we're gonna take this thing out and see what it can do. And I think we finally did it. It's been two years in the making of making like an ultimate turbo sleeper out of this thing. And I think we might be there. The gears are better. The rear end is really dialed. It feels awesome. The built motor, built gear star transmission, uh, turbo 600 horsepower. What's not to love? I can't wait. We're gonna do a little bit of mess around with the Holly to make sure that it's reading the new gear right and uh, let it cool, hopefully harden up that ring and pinion just right, and then we're gonna hammer on it. Fire this motor up, it is happy. I actually connected with Don D'Alessio from D'Alessio Race Engines, and he told me the story of this engine, because we bought it third or even maybe fourth hand, and he said he built this thing years ago, maybe five years ago, just on the cheap, very budget build, a good buddy of his not to expect too much out of it that you know it's not a crazy race motor but it should be pretty solid for us it's been awesome it makes like 80 psi of oil pressure smokes a hair on startup and it cleans up which happens you know with i think a decent amount of built motors with some some ring gap in them and uh, this thing is killer and we paid you know i forget 1500 bucks for it slapped everything on top and we're off and running which we're very happy about Alright, we're going back to the shop to grab our little draggy. We're hoping to take this to the track, but it's not open today. So we may do a little zero to 60 ourselves on a nice closed course out here. Yeah, we do. Uh, and I have to get my little tuning computer so I can set up the gear ratio properly because it thinks I'm going 70, but I'm going 40. Yeah, that's not the same thing. Maybe that thing's reading off four or five. 
25 pounds. Because 22 pounds, that's that's too many pounds. That's way too many Even pounds. with our meth injection, that's too many pounds. Yeah. I like this thing to live a little bit. I think we were at 19 on the dyno. That's still too many. jump into power it doesn't seem to make power until 4500 5000 rpm and then you know then you're in the boost and you're in the party place so i'm gonna try it again we'll see what it does i'd like to mention we drove this thing like 25 miles already happy as a clam good oil pressure staying cool we don't have a chase vehicle it's just me and barb out here this is awesome it uh got a little squirrely if i'm being honest so I'm gonna probably shut it down right at 60 this time. Probably get it aligned at some point, for sure, because it's uh, pretty radical. <laughs> I, it's weird, when I got back in this car, this thing has been so much trouble that I had a bad taste. I was like, everything, I was real ginger, like, oh, is it gonna ex just instantly explode? And putting some miles on it and feeling it and checking the boost and checking the gauges, and seeing it and feeling how solid it feels starting to really fall in love with this thing. It definitely needs more fine tuning, but it's real close to being just a hilarious lunatic. Sleeper, it's just a 600 horsepower Lincoln that you would never see coming. Unless you looked at the exhaust sticking off the side.
2.5. Okay, we're rocking. It just can't get out of the hole and then it feels like you got rear-ended by a truck. So it's, we gotta do something with that. I'm not above putting like a 75 shot on the bottom end of this thing that turns off at two PSI. Not above. Might as well have meth injection, turbo, plus nitrous, all the good things. 551, pretty good, but I'll tell you what. I had it matted. So I think we can get more timing in the bottom end. It needs response out of boost, but it's, it's rocking. I'm telling you right now with a straight face, this thing will run even with it that launch issue i bet it runs the 11s So that is it for this episode of Stay Tuned. Grandpa's sleeper Lincoln is an absolute animal. We are so very close to turning this thing into like just the perfect indiscreet killing machine. Uh, I think a little bit of tuning, uh, a little bit of alignment, and we're gonna be there. I'm gonna wait for this car to go by. Yep, Again. Good. Mm -hmm. So that is it for this episode of Stay Tuned. Grandpa's turbo sleeper Lincoln is just killer i think we're like just about there to reaching our goal of having the most indiscreet killing machine of all time a little bit more tuning a little bit of alignment and i think we're going to take this thing out and surprise a lot of folks so that'll be the next time we dig into this car thanks for watching please like and subscribe and we'll see you guys next time oh and it does it does burnouts you just gotta kick it in the pants first <laughs>